In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. The one God to whom praise is due forever, the Lord of the world. I bear witness that nothing and no one deserves to be worshipped besides Allah, who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. We thank him for raising up in our midst a divine leader, teacher, and guide in the personage of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I am forever thankful to Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for extending their guidance and mercy upon us in a divine leader, teacher, and guide for us today. I speak of none other than the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. In their holy and righteous names, I greet my beloved sisters and brothers with the greeting words of peace. In the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. Indeed, is it always a great honor to be standing on the side of truth today and to be standing with a man of truth, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. I'm greatly honored and privileged to be before you in shedding the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to us, the black man and woman of America, these teachings are so powerful they will resurrect you overnight. The guidance and the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad will gain you everything that you want in this world's life and the life to come. The condition or rather the success of us today is contingent upon our following of this great man in our midst. Oftentimes, we may not understand why a divine man does certain things. And the reason why we don't understand why a divine man does certain things or moves in certain directions is because we don't understand the workings of divine. We have not been taught what is divine. We don't understand God when he makes a move and when he makes a left we think that he should have made a right. And Allah is the best knower. We are very, very blessed as a people to have been given a messenger. I don't know what that means to you, but what it means to me is that I have a chance to live. I have a chance as a young man in white America to overcome the shackles of slavery. I have a chance to overcome the low self-esteem that white folks have put in us. I have a chance to benefit from working hard and gaining the success that comes with following a messenger of God. Jesus said, come follow me. He didn't say, come and understand me. He said, come follow me, for you are not with understanding. But if you have enough intelligent to follow the leader when you get safely to the other side you will then have understanding but in that long journey out of the threat of danger 
We're only asked to follow. Because there are many moves that the leader or the guide will make that you have not been given enough understanding to, under, to, to know why he will make a left. When if you look to the right, it looks like that is the better way. But had you had guided yourself, and had you been able to get yourself out of the condition of hell that white folks have put you in, there would be no need for a guide. There would be no need for a messenger. But because you and I could not have guided ourselves out of the condition that white folks have put us in, then God gives you a messenger, gives up a messenger, and asks us to follow him. Where? Out of danger out of the hand of an oppressor and don't ask too many questions because as you spend time casting doubt on that guide on that leader when you look up the leader and the guide is so far down the path you will find yourself trying to catch up because you spent so much valuable time questioning the motives and the intention of that leader when you were only asked to follow him. You understand? At last, God has given up a messenger. He has blessed people all around this globe to have guidance, except you and I. Our guidance has come from our slave master. Our teaching, our education has come from our slave master. How do you account for the power that white folks enjoy today? Have you ever questioned how they gain power and authority over the peoples of the world? Did they make themselves and did they teach themselves or did they receive divine guidance from Allah that has given them the prominent position in the world as rulers and authority over the peoples of the world? How do you account for so much wealth that has been amassed by white folks? How do you account for the wonderful cities that they have erected here in America and in Europe? They did not teach themselves. They come from a humble beginning. They came from a savage state. And they were civilized and taught how to respect one another in order for them to gain to the human family of the planet Earth. They could not have been accepted by the human family of the planet Earth unless they were civilized and given a knowledge. And to the extent of the knowledge that they have been given is to the extent of their rule and power. Are y'all all right? Let's go back to the humble beginning of the Caucasian people. And we're going to draw a parallel between white folks and you today. God raised up Abraham. He sent Lot to Sodom and Gomorrah. He raised up David. He raised up Jesus. He raised up Muhammad. The Arab world has become powerful and wealthy because of guidance and divine guidance. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that our solution to our problem, yes, it's economic, yes, it's education, but it lies at divine guidance. So the problem of the black man and woman is solved through 
spiritual knowledge and spiritual civilization. The world is lost today and is in darkness because they do not have divine guidance. But the Arab world became powerful because God raised up Muhammad and gave him a book and revealed the Quran through Muhammad and in 23 years he transformed the lives of Arab people that were divided amongst themselves into tribes. They disrespected their women and they were drunk in the sands of Arabia. But Muhammad gave them a guidance from God that made them into one nation and made them a powerful people and respected by the world over. It is only through divine guidance that we can come back to where we once were as the mothers and fathers of civilization and the rulers of the human family of the planet Earth. Moses is revered by the Caucasian people. Did you know that? The Jews reverend Moses of all the prophets Moses is revered by the Western world. Why? Because Moses is the reason why they have gained prominence in the world because Moses was sent to the Caucasian people when they were in the caves and hillsides of Europe. All right, let's look at it. In the Bible, you read of Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden because of their disobedience. Is that right? And the serpent was cast out with Adam and Eve. And in the Bible, it says that a flaming sword the cherubim were placed at the east entrance of the Garden of Eden. Is that right? What is it talking about? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the Caucasian people are unquestionably, undoubtedly, they come from the original people. And they were grafted from the original man. 6,000 years ago, or to be exact, 6,600 and a few years ago, on an island called Patmos or Pilon in the Aegean Sea. This can be placed because in the book of Revelation, you see John getting a revelation from God. And John is on the island of Patmos, and his writing can be found today on that island. And what is it that he sees and writes in the book of Revelation? He's writing about the end of a people that he helped to bring into the world. John is another name for Yakub. Y'all all right? Yaqub writes the end to his people in the book of Revelation. On this island of Patmos or Pilon, the grafting takes place because Yaqub at the age of six discovered by playing with two pieces of steel that one alike attracts and alike repels. And this triggered in his mind the idea to make a people. And he went to his uncle at the age of six and said to his uncle, I'm going to make a people to rule over you. And his uncle says, what will you make except that which would cause mischief and the shedding of blood? in the Quran that is written. What will you make except that which 
will cause mischief and the shedding of blood. And Yaqub answers his uncle and says, I know what you know not. Because the wise elite scientists of our people knew and had already determined the birth of Yaqub in the year one, some 15,000 years ago in our calendar history, which is based upon 25,000 years according to the circumference of our earth, which is 24,896 miles, but it's rounded to the nearest number, 25,000. And at one time, the scientists wrote the history every 35,000 years because the moon was once a part of the earth. Now, Yakub had the predetermined mind to make a people that would rule over the original people. And he began, he graduated from all the colleges and universities at that time. At the age of 16, 18, he was finished. And upon his study, he looked inside the germ of the original man and discovered a brown germ. Where he begins to study what they are studying today, the DNA how they can take out certain characteristics and qualities in the nature of man or replace it with other characteristics and qualities. This they're doing today. How do you get a grapefruit? The process of grafting. Huh? That's why you can't call the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching some poetic, some philosopher that just dreamed up these things and decided to give us these fairy tale teachings. We had been reared on fairy tale teachings with the Bible. That's a fairy tale teaching for you. Now, when uh, Yaqub discovered this, he began to gather and to spread this new teaching. Remember that there was already 30% dissatisfaction in the Holy Land. And we are taught that dissatisfaction brings about a change. Yaqub began to gather people. He gathered 59,999 and himself made 60,000. They started causing so much trouble in the Holy Land. They were imprisoned. And the king, knowing the history, knew that this, that there was nothing that he could do about it. So he began to negotiate with Yakub. And then he rounded up Yakub and all of his followers, put them on ships, and they were provided for a span of 20 years because that was the, um, uh, 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 the condition that Yaqub gave the rulers of Mecca at that time. Give me the means and I'll go from you. And then he went to this island of Patmos. It's a beautiful, long history. But from there, the white race was grafted from the original man during a span of 600 years. And the, the law was very strict of Yakub. And they only allowed, after black um, would give birth to a brown, the black babies were killed by the injection of a needle in the brain of the black baby or the first lie so teaches the honorable elijah muhammad was told to the mother of that child that your child was a good child and he had gone to heaven 
but he was actually fed to the wild beast because the thing was to eliminate the black. This is a history that this world today cannot rebuke. It is actual fact. And over a period of 200 years, they did away with all of the black. Then they dealt with the brown. And finally, they got the red, the yellow, and ultimately the white. When the Caucasian people, they had been taught how to master the original man. Caucasian means weak blood, weak bone, pale face, or stale face. Once you have grafted from the original to its weakest stage, which is the Caucasian people, that's what makes them so prone to so much sickness and disease because their very nature is weak. White people return back to the original land in Mecca because they were taught to go back and master the original people. When they came into the Holy Land, the original people had never saw anything like this. They were like monsters to them. Coming in with blonde hair, pale, stale faces, blue eyes. The original people didn't know what they were looking at. Was it a curse or a blessing? But they soon found out because they had started causing trouble among the righteous people telling lies. They accused the righteous people causing them to fight and kill one another. This is why in the Bible Jesus talking to the Jews telling them I know who your father is. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. This is the Caucasian people. Then we have in our history and lesson that after they had caused so much trouble in the righteous land, we expelled them one more time and we rounded them up and ran them across the hot Arabian desert. We took from them everything except the language and made him to walk every step of the way. It was 2,200 miles and we ran them into the caves and hillsides of Europe. E-U and R-O-P-E. E-U standing for the hills and caves and the rope to bind them in. So the Bible bears witness to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that a flaming sword, the cherubims were put on the east entrance to the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden at that time was the whole Persian and Afghanistan peninsula all the way into Saudi Arabia, into the Nile River. And the only way that Europe or the Caucasians that had been driven away could gain entrance into the east was to the east gate, which is Turkey, and the Caucasus Mountain, which is where they get their name, the Caucasian people. Y'all all right? Now, they went savage. They went savage. Some of them, if you notice, if you look at the brothers or, or the people of Afghanistan, of Turkey, they are very light-complected. That is because they are brothers. You have the original people, the black man and woman, they are also of that area of the planet. But the white people who accepted the teachings, the righteous law, they were left at the east entrance, which is the powerful Turkish people. If you look at the Ottoman Empire, 
And that great people of Turkey, they are warriors from the beginning because they were assigned to guard that gate and they guarded it for 1,000 years. That's why you read in the Bible again, Satan being locked up. For a thousand years, then Satan was let loose. Oh, this is beautiful. The Caucasian people, having been stripped of everything except the language, except for a little clothing to hide their shame, and they went savage and they even lost the language. They were made to suffer in the caves and hillsides of Europe, not for a hundred years, not for five hundred years, not for a thousand, but for two thousand years. They went savage. And what does savage mean? Savage means a person who has lost the knowledge of himself and is living the life of a beast. How? the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. The Caucasian people are given the description in the Bible as the beast, because he went on all fours, eating the bark of trees, eating flesh raw. His friend was the swine, the dog, and the monkey. Huh? Those were his friends. You will find a lot of this, bear witness again, time won't allow it, but in the 18th surah of the Holy Quran, entitled, The Cave. The Cave. They have already produced many movies on their humble origins. Remember the late great planet Earth? Even 2001 Space Odyssey? Uh, quest for fire that's not you and me I beg your pardon that's not my humble beginning we don't have that beginning they lost the language and they ended up barking <laughs> these were savages who had not, who had lost knowledge now, which shows you when a people lose the knowledge of themselves, they go savage, they begin to feed off of their lower desires, and they turn into an animal, which is the lowest stage of development in human development. Do you understand? The Caucasian people tried to grasp themselves back into original. The Caucasian don't come from monkeys. Monkeys come from Caucasians. That is the ape. Now you say, man, we never heard this. It's in message to the black man that's been around for 60 years. You just didn't understand it where it relates to you and your condition. That's what I'm about to get to in a minute. Now, you know that white folks today, their best friend is a dog. They will respect, bay, shelter, feed a dog before they will shelter, bathe, and feed you. Am I right? If I'm lying, tell me so. Man's best friend is a dog. Man's best friend is God, not a dog. Now when the Caucasian people began to grasp themselves back, they got the monkey, the ape. And you know white folks love monkeys. I'll be a monkey's uncle. You see all their little children, they take them to the zoo. The chimpanzees and the orangutans and the gorillas, they love the monkeys. They have good communication with this monkey. I can't 
understand the creature personally, I see nothing of value in a monkey. To prove to you that the monkey comes from the Caucasian people, our Savior, our Deliverer, Master Farad Muhammad, when he came into this city, Chicago, many years ago, do you know, I think they still have it in the Museum of uh, Field, uh, not the Science Museum, the Natural Field Museum. I think they have a stuffed gorilla, or is it in the zoo? But the name of this gorilla was Bushman. Remember, big, giant gorilla. Well, Master Farad Muhammad talked to that monkey, that gorilla. And you know what he said? Assalamu alaikum. The gorilla went crazy because he was being offered peace and in the state of mind and he knew that he could not enjoy peace in the condition that he was in. And there's also been tried by other Muslims that knew of this history to see if they go to a gorilla and say, Assalamu alaikum, what would be the reaction? I tried to do it once. And it looked at me kind of crazy. But the monkeys is a result of the Caucasian people trying to grasp themselves back into original. The swine, they love swine. Why do they love swine? Because they were so susceptible to diseases. God gave them the swine for medicinal purposes. And that swine is great for bacteria. If your body is suffering from, from poisons and toxins, it will form a boil on your body. Is that right? Well, in the old days, as I understand it, because I'm a young man, all you had to do was take the swine's flesh and lay it on a boil and the flesh would begin to pull up and draw all of those poisons out of you. And this is the swine that you put in your body that you say, according to the Bible, that Jesus sanctioned all meats to eat because of that sheep that came down and all meats were in the sheep. The Bible prohibits the eating of the swine. Don't even touch its carcass. That is for medicinal purposes and it's not for you. It's for white folks that needed this in order to survive. Now, after he had gone savage for 2,000 years, God commissions and sends Moses to civilize him and teach him the law. Because in the state that white folks were, they could never be accepted among the civilized people of the, of the world because they had gone savage. Moses were asked, why did Musa have a hard time civilizing the devil 2000 BC? Because he was savage. Savage means, again, a person who has lost the knowledge of himself and is living the life of a beast. Musa was a half-original man and a prophet. 2000 B.C. means before Christ. Huh? This is Moses. The Moses that you read of in the Bible, that picture that is given in the Bible, it never happened. Go to Egypt today and you'll never put up any records where there were Jews in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. Huh? That Moses in the uh, Bible prefigures the Moses that is in your midst today. Jews cannot find in their record where they were in bondage and enslaved. For 400 years, no such thing, no record. 
That's why they can't claim to be the seed of Abraham. For Abraham says in the uh, Genesis, God talking to Abraham, telling him that thy seed will be a stranger in a land that is not there. They shall serve them and they shall be afflicted for a hundred years. But after that time, I will come and judge that nation which they shall serve. And that's why Jesus, in meeting with the Jews, the, the, the Pharisees, when they ask about who that they are the seed of Abraham, and Jesus tells them, no, if you were the seed of Abraham, you would be doing the works of Abraham. You are of your father. You are a liar and a murderer. From the beginning, you're not going to say that you come from such a divine man and my father Abraham. No, that's not. They cannot claim that in the scriptures, which has angered the Jews because Elijah Muhammad was raised up from among us and said, this scripture is talking about you and I being in bondage for 400 years and there is no record any other people in the world being in bondage for 400 years other than the black man and woman of America. <laughs> Moses was sent to civilize the savage. He had a hard time. And he really did not like, even though God and the angels were commissioning him to do it, he was rebelling all the time. I'm talking about Moses. Poor man. All by himself. In the caves. And Moses begins to teach the savage how to cook his meals properly, how to build a home for himself. The savage, because he was living in the cave, imagine that he was not even exposed to sunlight. Therefore, he grew hair all over his body. And you know that white folks today have an inordinate amount of hair on their bodies because their humble beginnings, the entrance of the cave, were faced to the north. There was no sun even upon them. They were not even turned to the east where the sun rises. So Moses comes, he puts a board on their back because they had gone down on their all fours like beasts. He puts a board on their back to straighten up their back to lift them up. That is why Moses is revered because Moses sets them on a straight path from an uncivilized state to a civilized state which would make them now able to take the knowledge of Moses and the civilization that Moses taught them. Now they could be let loose from Europe and come back to the original people of the planet and conquer and dominate them. Y'all all right? This is Moses. They have a statue of Moses in Washington, D.C. To show you how much Moses is revered by the Caucasian people. What does it all mean for you and I? God gave Moses a law for the savage. He taught him civilization. He even taught him some of the forgotten technology that Yaqub, their father, had given them. Remember, in their beginning, they are taught to master you and me. But they had lost that science. They had lost everything because the only way that they could fool the original people was into tricks and lies. 
You can't fool us out of knowledge, for we had the knowledge. But if you deceitfully reshape and re uh, 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 put another cover on the interpretation of God, then you can lead the righteous man astray. And that is what Moses now gives them the teaching and the technology, some of it, not all of it, some of it. And part, a lot of that technology was how to master the original man. Now you say, why does God do this? Right? That's the logical question. Well, I mean, come on, God, why would you do this? Let's open up. It's called supreme wisdom. Not just any old kind of wisdom. Supreme wisdom. You can't get it unless you get an X. But in this, see, we have one of them that says, what was his idea of making devil? This is talking about Yaqub again. It was predicted of him that he would make a devil 8,400 years before he was born. So he was born with the determined idea to make a people to rule for 6,000 years. Then we're asked, then why did God make devil? To show forth his power, that he is all wise and righteous, that he could make a devil which is weak and wicked and give the devil power to rule the earth for 6,000 years and then destroy the devil in one day without falling victim to the devil's civilization. Otherwise, to show and prove that our law is God always has been and always will be. What is the purpose? If in man and in creation it was not perfect from the beginning, then the idea of the creator of the heavens and the earth is to ultimately bring his universe into perfection. And in man, in the original man, there was imperfection. Therefore, this imperfection had to be rooted out of him. But the point is, God has to show forth his power. And God cannot be a God, nor can he be a champion without an opponent. What white folks have done to us, remember, the white folks have been on the planet 6,000 years. But we had strayed from the right course and from God thousands of years before even Yaqub had the idea to bring white folks into the world. Ah, this is a lot of history. 